peace to all the American Aborigines, all the Moors, all the Indians, and all the surrounding islands. Peace. I'm bringing this video to you because I want to jump down this rabbit hole and dive into some more histories of the Moors. And what I come to realize is we've been lied to, history been whitewashed, and everything has been flipped. They have us as the slave, when really they were the slave, the Slavic people. We was the rulers, and we had an empire stretching from America to Africa to Europe and Asia, a global empire where we went and created kingdoms. America is the seat of the empire where all kingdoms had to bow down to. Somewhere down the line, these kingdoms turned Christian. And when they turned Christian, that's when the fall happened. They were the first to come over here to create the 13 colonies. Moors from that side of the world came here and negotiated deals with us, with the Moors here in the empire. This is the only way people were able to get deals done. It wasn't a pale face that came and sat at the table. It was another melanated brother, what we would call a Moor. Some people would call a dirty Moor. They came here to the empire and wanted to take over business everything here was about business coming here and growing the crop and taking it back there to their lands and selling it somewhere down the line the white tea became on top but how america fell it wasn't them coming over here striking deals and causing the confusion it was people that looked like us moors when the 13 colony was created, it was Christianized Moors under the brotherhood, oath takers. When they came, they wanted to get greedy. They wanted more territory. Then start bringing these white tea people in that was part of the same order as them. So when they came and the people of this land start seeing them putting these foreign people in high seats, that's when the problem came because nobody foreign should be governor in high seats over this land. So it was us against ourselves for letting foreign people into positions that they have no business sitting in. So I hope to prove to you or just show you. I don't have to prove anything. The proof is in the information and whether you understand it or not. A lot of people don't understand. That's why I have to make these, these videos so I can help you see the truth. That is not us against white people. It's us against ourselves, just like how it is now. It's more of us against us over information, religion, anything you can think of, games. It's us against us. It's nobody else. The only people who could bring us down is people like us. So pay attention, get your ears ready, get your pencil and pad ready, take notes, raise your hand after the class. You and I are aborigines. Too much proof, come on. We got too much proof. Let's go. Too much proof, come on. We got too much proof. Let's go. Let us through, or you gon' make the news. Let's go. Let us through, or you gon' make the news. Let's go. NBC, make that make some sense. NBC, make that make some sense. Let us through, or you gon' make the news. Let us through, or you gon' make the news. But it's ready. Okay, I will suggest that you get a piece of paper, and I want four columns. I want you to set up for four columns on a piece of paper. Because you're going to have to look this up. Because you're not going to believe this. You're going to call me the craziest man on the planet when I get through with you tonight. Because this stuff is so heavy. When I talk about it, people look at me like, where did you get that? So let's get started. I want the first column to be a title, Iroquois Confederation. The second column, I want Power Tan 
Confederation. That's P as in Paul, okay. P as in Paul, O as in Opal, uh, W as in uh, Washington, H as in House, T as in Tom, A as in Apple, N N as in Negro, Negro. It's called Power Plant. Okay. All right. Now the next column I want General Custer. Hmm. And the last column I want Colonel Shivington, C H I V I N G T O N. C is in Charlie, H is in House, I is in Idea, uh, N as in Negro, G as in Golf, T as in Tom, O as in Opal, and N as in Negro once again. Colonel Shivington. Okay. All right, we're ready to go. Now, I'm going to drop these bombs. And we're going to go from the bomb. That's the only way I can give you this. Number one, the Civil War, as you were taught, never existed. Oh, my God. Another lie. Another tremendous lie. Never existed. All right? Number two, all of the wars that they tried to glamorize from Hollywood with the Civil War, such as Gettysburg, Appalapagus, whatever, all that trash. Those were court decisions. Those were battles in court. That's it. Now, if you go to your Black Laws Dictionary and look up battles, talk about legal confrontations. All right? If you go and look up Indian fighter, you'll find that there were a multitude of wars, multi hundreds of wars, slaughters by the Europeans and the Buffalo soldiers, let's not leave that, them punks out, to wipe out the black race of Moors. Now, Wait a minute, Ron, the you the Buffalo soldiers yes, they started out as a helpful unit of the, uh, I hate to call them the Union Army, but let's call them the Union Army, to guide them into the black nations to kill black folks. Now, they were not necessarily started with that premise, but the bottom line is they ended up with that premise. Buffalo soldiers were the enemies, major enemies, to black America. Number three, I'm just dropping bombs before I even start the presentation. Number three, there is no such thing on this earth as an Indian. Whoa, 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 whoa. That one. It don't exist. They created that in order to hide the bloodshed and the murder and the rape of our ancestors, women, and children. Okay? Now, let's get started. 1860, 1860, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65 were some of the most bloody battles in American history from the Indian fighter perspective. And they try to make you believe that they were fighting way out west, but they were not. There was a lot of laws passed prior to 1860, especially the law of 1836, when they started the removal of black people that were in the southern black delta area, all in the south. If you look up Trail of Tears, this is when in Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi areas, the European settlers pushed all, not all, 90% of all the blacks out and told them to get the hell out and they walked from that air, southern territory all the way to Oklahoma territory. Now we're not talking about Oklahoma as a state. We're talking about Oklahoma as a territory which would be a confederation of our people who ran that area out there. We have to understand when the European talked about territories, he, that's his term for confederations. The Civil War 
in the books that they taught you was your uh, Union Army and, and which was against the Gray Coats never, never, ever existed. What was happening was the Power Tan Confederation, all blackies, fought the Iroquois Confederation, all blackies. And they had a discrepancy in Congress because the Power Tan wanted the Europeans to have some of our ritual rights, like our land. And they were never in the Constitution, even today. The European can never, ever, ever own land in the United States, the Western Hemisphere. Cannot! That's why he used those little phony deeds, warranty deeds, deeds. They use titles, they use certificates. Never will they give you an allodial title which gives you pure ownership of land. Because they can't do it, and the government that they set up will, can never, ever do it. So when they, allodial, allodial, A-L-L-O-D-I-A-L, allodial title. It's not in most dictionaries. So you got to do some real, real serious search, and the first thing they're going to say when you find it, it's not in the United States. And they're right, because they're talking about the United States of America, not the United States of the original Constitution. Why we must, must, must create our own nationality so we can get back to the original Constitution. They had, in 1861, they had a, uh, it was, I'll, I'll be guessing, if I try and label the number of the uh, legislation in the Senate and the House in 1861, but when the Power Tan showed up and the Iroquois Confederation showed up, there was a huge battle in Congress. And part of the Iroquois Confederation... Peace to the Amarukans. Right here. Right here, it says case 191 in 1848. Go look this up, you can see it yourself. I had to go see it for myself because I, I was like, damn, this is a game terms. This is checkmate on all stages, on all people calling themselves the America. From the native to the people that just want to be Indians. Everybody, this is the United States case 191 in 1848. In other words, on June 6, 1848, a Supreme Court decided Read by Theo Michaela Judge declared that the United States does not, the United States does not own the land of the ancient mound builders of North America, much more than a million square miles of land by the Moors, not the Moors, Moors of Amaruka. We are Amarukans. We are Moors. Are the title holder. Now, how many of y'all knew this was here? How many of y'all understand this here and what this means? How many of y'all can comprehend what this is? And that's why we need to learn as much as we can. We don't know it all, so we have to listen to it all. All sides of it. We have to know who we are. That's why we have to be master students. The Eye of Promise is a popular symbol among Moorish sovereigns. Many claim it's present from the dollar bill sent by the contract between the final fathers and the supposedly indigenous Moors of Mexico. So why do the Moors have a symbol on the back of the dollar bill? Why are the founding fathers doing a contract with the Moors? These are questions we must ask. These are things we must study. And why don't the Native Americans have a symbol or a contract with the founding fathers? Where is this symbol? So where is the Indian symbol? And why did they mention Moors and not Indian tribes? We've been on this app fighting about Native American, Indian, or Moors. But it's looking like the Moors have the paperwork. They have the evidence. Why is this saying this? Let's jump down this rabbit hole and find out why. Let's be master students and find out why. Everything should be about why. And don't be afraid of the information. What's everybody, what's going on, man? We out here at one of the uh, battle forts, one of the old battle forts built on top of one of the mounds out here in uh, Al-Andalusia. 
which uh, we also know as uh, Florida, Florida Republic. And uh, this was one of the uh, ramparts that was left from some of the old conflicts between the Moors and the so-called Spanish going all the way back to maybe the 1500s. What we gotta understand is that um, at one point in some of the Spanish maps, especially the earlier ones that were basically Reconquista maps, meaning that they were, that once the Moors uh, agreed to have certain aspects of their community merged with the new Spanish regime, they allowed their names to be uh, redesignated, repositioned, which then the Spanish would then come into places where the Moors was already at and then bring these these writs and these edicts and then those Moors that wasn't down with it would rebel and then those Moors that wanted to stay would follow the edict and then pretty soon they're now absorbed and it goes from, you know, Rodrigo, uh, you know, Ra Amar Bay to Rodrigo, uh, whatever, you know, Rodrigo Santana or whatever they want to do. And so what that did was um, it, once they took control of the ruling government of the specific place, the nation state or the city state, then what they would do is that they would enslave the Muslims first. Now notice I said that they would come in and shut down the Moorish or absorb the Moorish territory or community. And then once that would happen, the first thing they would do is enslave the Muslims and make them into, or force them into Christianity to force uh, uh, baptism and stuff. So that again was a rite of passage by which, which Moors would put themselves in positions to be somewhat redesignated into something that they really not. And so this, where we stand here, is like evidence of that. You know, you can tell in the strata of the different types of rocks that's used, that this was, you know, a remnant of what was left, you know. You can tell if you go down downstairs, it's the same type of thing, you know. Uh, but like I was saying, a lot of the stuff they was, was doing back then, they, all of the United States or some of these maps were referred to as Florida. And you can check that out. But since we're talking about a civil war, and all of this other stuff that they're trying to pump on the so-called American people, we should do the knowledge. We should do the knowledge that they, um, when they was talking to us about the American Revolution, the Revolutionary War, they only mentioned people like Crispus Attucks and these people, and they only talking about the aspect of the war that took place in what they now today call Virginia, but back then was called like Edom and stuff like that. So when we really talk about the true American Revolution and where it started, it actually started in 1511 particularly funny enough in Baton Rouge under Mohammed bin Said who led the revolt of the Fulbe Moors who were not trying to hear the redistribution or the re uh, the reacquisition of Moorish imperial territory put under Spanish rule and because the Spanish at the time was working with the dirty French these so-called Europeans again that when we say Europeans we gotta understand we're not talking about Caucasian people that phenotypically call themselves Europeans today we're talking about the so-called mulatto or amalgamated moors or what they call tawny moors mm -hmm. or mozarabs or mamelukes or janissaries or any of these things that they were calling them to create a position where they could maintain a unified position over the traditional moors so based on that the the slave revolt that started in 1511 spread from baton rouge louisiana and it went all the way up into as far as Al Alaska and it went all the way down as far as Chile Word. and it created such a, a universal uh, swell of Aboriginal, Indigenous or Autochthonous Moorish people who were fighting against the encroachment of the, the so-called European <laughs> the so-called European it created a, a vacuum and so this led to the consolidation of what we call the Continental Congress so what uh, the great Prince Uriel very referred to as the Consultus Huevos Rectum which came out of the Capitis societies and the Capitis, uh, the Capitis Confederate, which is basically the Article of Federations and the Article of Association, where the original 13 families of the original uh, Moorish dynasties that were connected to the Margarita de Iasosa line of Moors that escaped through what they now call the Portugal dominions, and they were able to maintain their position of power. And it, it, and it basically merged all of the so-called European families together in 962 as the Holy Roman Empire. So between 962 and 1511, you have the, the expansion of the so-called Moorish diaspora, Moorish Empire towards the Far East and the West. But over here, our empire started to wane. So by 1511, the Moors had enough and they set up situations where they started so fighting off BC, people like uh, uh, Prince, uh, what was his name? Princess Yusuf Solomon. Uh, Job Solomon, all of these were Moors. Uh, same thing. Frederick Douglass Pops uh, was a Moor from the from the uh, 
Kobe Dynasty, his name was Muhammad something. So you ask yourself, where was all of that in the narration of a slave and all that stuff that he wrote? But see, we gotta understand is that the European version for a free, the European name for a free national that had their own land but was not trying to capitulate to the laws of Europe, which was becoming vogue for certain uh, so-called uh, autochthonous Moors to have their own thing. These Moors was like, nah, we don't want to be down with that European shit. So based on that, they created a, a position by which now, if you wasn't adopting European law, you were now put in a position where you had to to uh, be be taken out. And so a lot of Moors rebelled against that. And that basically was the foment of the revolution. This is why between 1511 now and, and 1611, let's say 1511, which is when the revolutionary aspect of America starts, we go all the way up to 1775 now, is when it foments itself into a position where by now people have to realize that there's no other way to conserve or preserve the so-called union. So that union winds up becoming fractured and in that fracturing of that, the only tie that's binding them together is the fact that they were at one time uh, related. So what is so they create a a sestui trust basically to consolidate their family interests and then reconsolidate the fact that they now want to be independent of all of the internal and, and outside wars. So in that they create a compact with the twelve to thirteen families, each representing the zodiac, and then they come together and then form this consultus Bebos regnum, which is this imperial trust that's allegedly left for the original Moors. So the compact to lead that to happen started in 1776, but it didn't become fulfilled until 1787, when the so-called Treaty of Peace and Friendship was signed by the Sultan of the Sultan of then Morocco, meaning Morocco here, the Maghreb Al Aqsa, Morocco the farthest west at this time at Marrakesh. Marrakesh at this time is Philadelphia and Philadelphia Sheikh Mexico. From Philadelphia, that sultan met the representatives of the Almaricanos, because that's what they say on the original treaty, the Almaricanos, and they worked it out through their uh, administrative uh, Mamelukes, people like that. Why we must, must, must create our own nationality so we can get back to the original constitution. They had, in 1861, they had a, uh, it was, I'll, I'll be guessing, if I try and label the number of the uh, legislation in the Senate and the House in 1861, but when the Power Tan showed up and the Iroquois Confederation showed up, there was a huge battle in Congress. And part of the Iroquois Confederation, there was a tribe called the Mohawks. And the Mohawks said they wanted to side with, and I shouldn't say that because I'm not sure, but whatever teed off the Mohawks, they got up in Congress, which left less than a quorum so they couldn't continue. If anybody knows anything about Robert's Rules of Order, you know what a quorum is. Once the Mohawks walked out, Congress shut down. It's been shut down ever since 1861. There has never been a real congressional hearing of Congress since 1861. Unbelievable. Ooh. Now, the, the, the power can, they were friendly. Listen to me carefully. They were hunky-dory with the Europeans. But the Europeans trying to get a toehold and take what did not belong to them, they kidnapped Pocahontas. And they held her captive as a, a bargaining chip to release some European settlers that the, that the power tan had, had captured. But the worst thing of all, and I'm saying this with a clear heart of love, freedom, and peace, <laughs> Pocahontas turned into a Christian. She came back to the power tan and began to teach Christianity, and the Europeans sucked in all of the power tan Christians and started creating what we know today as the five civilized tribes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And if you look up the five civilized tribes, they tell you right off the bat, these were friendly natives to the Europeans. <laughs> Sister, when I run into this, my ass, I jumped up from the table. I said, Lord, let me get out of here. Walk outside. I said, whoa, this is too heavy. So now we got the 
Iroquois is very upset. They have a court battles going on to steal the land. The laws of Moors are, number one, you cannot have sex with Europeans or other race. And you know we were lying and cheating when that happened. So once they created the colored baby known as today, mulatto, the black daddies and black mamas wanted the mulattoes to have all of the rights as the Moors. And the Arab tells it, there's going to be some bloodshed if that go down the pike. So all of this went into what I know, and you're going to study, the massacre of black people. Niagara Falls is not named because of some type of historical bunch of crap. Niagara Falls is named Niagara because they killed niggas. And they call it Niagara. Niagara Falls. They said the water was so red that it looked like jello or whatever you want to call it. Coming over the falls. They killed the women because the women were the only owners of the land. Grandma and y'all family, everybody out there listen, Grandma had the big stick. She told your daddy what to do. And her jack cat bump was. She didn't she didn't waste no time. But Granny said work because we come from a matriarch culture. When the Europeans showed up, he come in with a patriarch culture. Right. So the first thing they had to do was to trick us which would be the Confederation, the uh, Iroquois, because they were in the New York, come down south, and go across the bottom. That's where that nation was. Now, when I say Iroquois nation, I'm talking about thousands and thousands of Indians, quote-unquote, black folks, that had all types of subtitles. The Iroquois Confederation only consisted of, I did my class last night, I knocked their socks off when I did. Woo! They went to screaming. I said, shut up, chief. They only, la they only label five tribes, and then they, na they label them nations. The Seminole, Crete, Choctaw, Chickasaw, and Cherokee. Now you know and I know what happened to the Apache, what happened to the Cheyennes, what happened to the, uh, uh, I can't call them all. There were hundreds of others, but they came under these nations once the European labeled them five civilized tribes. They had to hide from us, but we're here today. They had to hide from us what they did in order to take the land. But they're still under the original, hear me clear, Constitution, which was the original contract to let them chumps come in here. If you understand it, you know why we are the mind. You know why they created people like Al Sharpton, uh, Jesse Jackson, uh, all the way down the line that, that that praises them and keep us in the Negro mentality. Because there's no such thing as a Negro. We'll never learn our history as long as we're labeled Negroes. And he, European, can do anything he wants to his citizens because he labeled them 14th Amendment citizens. Now, what would come under a 14th Amendment citizen? I'll start out kind of nice and say, I can't be nice. Negro, colored, black, of all of the names that they can make up and give to us, we are automatically, through what they call acquiescent contract, become that. Because we never thought it. Because we didn't know what they was doing. So once they took over, Everything as a mirage now. They didn't take it over because they, all of it's fictitious. But once they made you believe that they were all over the place, you just said, hell with it. I'm a Negro. I'm a colored. I'm a black. So I ain't argue about it. If you don't declare yourself, you'll always be in bondage. I can't say that loud enough. Lady asked me last night. She said, Mr. March, what advantage would it be if we become, if we do have a nationality? The only reason I saved her life, but that was her first day. So I said to her, every move they make, they have to go through. Oh, it just dawned on me. Another citizen in the 14th Amendment is a straw man. So, like I said before, we established this government, right? It came from our old system. 
the old system was the Iroquois Federation. Islam. Right? Right. When you when you say, well, more, I, don't, I see the tribes, but I don't see us. Well, that's because you don't know the code. Islam. Whenever you see <laughs> the code more or more, and you see more hawks, more hegans, they're talking right. about the Moors. People. See? You talk about turbans and feathers. Most say, what do you mean, turbans and feathers? We don't. Did you have a feather? That's right. Did he have a turban? That's right. Come on, man. Adam, that's right. See? So, in the days of the Re American Revolution, our Declaration of Independence, see, there's three great lights in the world. The ancient biblical record, Islam. Okay. Islam. What we call the Bible. That's right. The Quran. That's right. Of Abdullah Yusuf Ali. Peace and blessings be upon him. Probably Muhammad. And the Constitution. So, right here, it says in 1621, the word Indian was substituted for Moors. Game changer. So, you Indians that's wondering why your great grandparents didn't tell you you was a Moor. Is because it was substituted in 1621. Your grandparents was in the 1800s. It was already substituted by then. But here, it's telling you, in 1621, the word Indian was substituted for Moors. The people who was Moors were called Indian. After the five civilized tribes converted, and with the war with the rest of the Moors, and enslaving them, people started converting from being a Moor to being an Indian. Game changer. After this, I, I really don't even want to hear Indians talk no more until they can start debunking this stuff that I'm dropping. I got love for the Indians because you are Moors. But you have to realize and stop fighting the information. Jump down that rabbit hole and find out who you are. It's right here. So this also means any tree shot after this date, 1621, that has Indian in it, is because it was after 1621. Let me see any treaty before 1621. Really not gonna find it because most treaties were signed in the 1800s. By the end, name was already reclassified. This goes hand in hand with George Washington when he said, "Take away the fezzes and the turbans and the sandals, and the moors will forget where they came from." We have forgotten. Now we're doing the proper steps to get back into our proper status and our proper name and nation. We are Moors, America. Yeah. So that's why we have European names today in our families, most of us. Those of us that um, were blessed to have other types of names or whatever, that's cool. But those of us that were actually born in this place and actually come from the people who helped establish this place, come from a long line of Moors who, again, were of the barbarous nations that they refer to as Indians. The only problem with being an Indian is, unfortunately, it puts you under the, the Negro Act. The Negro Act is also called the Civil Rights Act, which is also called the um, Civil Rights Act, the Negro Act. Yeah, it's also called the Civil Rights Act because they cease to recognize everybody as that. Uh, case in point, you can show and prove. Yeah, we could do that real quick. Um, yeah, as you see, 1871 Act, according to the Indian Appropriation Act. See, they appropriated the Indian. When you appropriate something, what does that mean? That means that you 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 taking it. You you about to make money off it. No longer was any group of Indians in the United States recognized as an independent nation by the federal government. Moreover, Congress directed that all Indians should be treated as what individuals and legally designated what wards of the federal government. You see what I'm saying? So don't get mad when you see gangbangers claiming shit or whatever, whatever claiming shit that don't belong to them. Like you, you, you ain't doing nothing no different. <laughs> you claiming federal wardship. That ain't no different than them banging on each other. Based upon what they, whatever turf or block that they think they they have the right to kill each other for. Now, when you're doing the same shit, but like I said, remember it's all based on the northern and the southern jurisdiction. The same way we read that the whole Great Schism came um, between the east and the west, just like the East Coast West Coast beef, right? Well, you had the the, the north and the south. The, the south was against the north. Well, what south and what north? 
Which one? The original one before the New Madrid earthquake event, the Carrington event, or the one after? And which North and South are you talking about? Are you talking about geographic location, or are you talking about Freemasonic jurisdiction? I think you're talking about the latter. And you see all the red flags? See America? Look, with the giant trees. And all the Moorish flags around the fort, just like it says in around the coast, just like it says in um, Tom Walker by Meredith Quinn. As well as Golden Trade of the Moor by Edward Beauville. Let me read that. Or another one. See? The Ford de Louvre. But look at the symbol. Now you see the symbol, right? This right here. Right? We know that as the Floor de Louvre, right? But this existed before that. The Merovingian didn't reconcile themselves. They wasn't at that point at this time. You see all of these castles? So that means that they inherited this from them when they married into the families over here. You know what I'm saying? See the castles? More. See all of the flags, right? This is all America. Look, look the coast. Look the castle right here. Where's, where's the castle that was right here? <laughs> Between Florida and Louisiana. Where's that at? That's gone. See all the Moors flags and so called royal flags. You got the giant trees. You got the castles and the cities. Then behind, you got another one. So this is this is the time, like this is the time that we talk about. Well, Herodotus came after, you know, way after. So called the the Renato and all that came way after Herodotus, but I'm just saying that the period in the people that he's talking about is the, is our peoples, the, we as being the descendants of them, which then is supposed to give us certain natural rights, so long as we still identify with that type of understanding of who we are. This is from the book Origin of Discerning. Right. He lied right. about the Civil War. He came up with that bull crap. And I always said, if you had the North as Union soldiers and the South as Confederate soldiers, who did the South confederate with to make them Confederates? Nobody could answer that. Y'all can't answer it today. And I done told you the answer 40 times. Bobby L. told me, and I said, I'll be damned. But Bill also told me that the North was not the North Union Army. The North was a huge confederation known as the Power Ten. And the South was a confederation known as the Iroquois Confederation. I do mighty know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard me. The Power Ten Confederation and the Iroquois Confederation. And guess who won? The Iroquois Confederation. Why were they fighting? Because the Iroquois nation knew that we as Moors, and I'm using the word that they gave me, only, were not supposed to mix our blood with them. And every time you bring this conversation up in the books or try to look for it, the only thing you're going to find is Poc uh, was the name Pocatella, not Pocatella. Uh, what's that chick's name? Pocahontas. Pocatella. <laughs> Pocatella, Idaho. I've been out there. Ain't nothing out there but white folks. Called me a nigga and I left them on the roof. They told me to go in there and bring them people out because they were flooding in 1962. Me and a white boy was in an aluminum rowboat. Rolled all the way out there to get the pecs. And one peg was said, God, I'm just, God, that looks like a nigger. I made a U-turn and went on back. Left them out there. Hell with it. <laughs> 1962. <laughs> I'm crazy. I know I am. All right. Pocahontas. She belonged to the Power Ten. Her daddy was the chief, big dog of the Power Ten Confederation. What, is, what was she known for? Marion of Peckerwood. What else was she known for? She turned it into a Christian. I don't mighty know. Why did they turn her into a Christian? Because they took her God and put it on the table. God is within all of us. We born with God. 
Last week, when I was gave the presentation on Pope Pius the Ninth, it hit me like a brick, and I get a lot of this from a brick. The Pope was upset with United States of America Inc. because they mimicked the original Constitution that they were under, whereas it states that they have to be under common law. Why would the Pope be upset with common law? Now, if you, if you, you should answer that right away, but I know you don't know. Common law says you have a right to worship your own creator. You have a right to do what is religiously in your heart to do. That's why they call it common. They also say that the only crime you can commit is murder and steal or destroying someone's property. That's the only crimes you can commit. But that doesn't stand well in the dynasty that the Christians wanted to build. So as they created this thing and then took the Vatican, I need to look up. I know when the Vatican was there in World War I, Mussolini recognized the Vatican as a country. I read that once. But I need to know when was the Vatican a Vatican? When was it a, a religious place? And I do know that uh, the Ottoman Empire, that was over in that area where our brothers, the Ottoman, were people of color. Wow. They were feared all over Asia, if you were an Ottoman. They turned out to be Turks. I've met Turks when I was in the military. And it's true. They love black people. They have no likings of black Christians because they don't exist. But then y'all don't know that, so y'all go over there and talk that stuff. That's another, another program altogether. The bottom line I'm trying to tell you is, in the beginning, there was only people of color and the European. When they began to put it in writing, they made people of color Moors. You know, America's they... founding fathers were black guys? Yeah, neither did I. Uh, but thanks to Google's new AI program, they've set the record straight. Thanks, Google, for giving me a great history lesson. Apparently, black guys signed the Declaration of Independence. They also uh, wrote the Constitution. Th Apparently, black guys signed the Declaration of Independence. They also uh, wrote the Constitution. Th Apparently, black guys signed the Declaration of Independence. They also uh, wrote the Constitution. Th hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, I don't know if you've seen in the news recently, uh, there was a Native American, so-called Native American tribe that has adopted 14 plus million, or allegedly it wants to adopt 14 million uh, so-called white people into their ranks. Now, a lot of these same nations that's trying to do that, these are the same nations now that basically put out an edict of before where they were trying to get rid of all of the so-called black or slave descendant Cherokees out of the so-called Cherokee nation. The Supreme Court found that to be illegal and uh, based on that now they had to allow them back in. The problem with that is that we have to understand that how we come into something is usually how we leave it. So what they want us to believe is that tribes like the Cherokee and the Seminole and these people like that were uh, so-called uh, phenotypically looking like the so-called Native Americans that existed prior, excuse me, after 1899. When we know that that's not really true. We know the original Chata Nation, the original uh, Charatagi, the original uh, Mes Mesquite or what they call Muscogee. Uh, Narragansett, Nanticoke, Delaware, Montauk, Abenaki, Wabanaki, all of these so-called clans and tribes or nations were all Muslims prior to 1899. Don't let them fool you. Don't let them make you think that they wasn't Moors. Don't let them make you think that they were not the Alamaracanos or Stados. They were that. The problem was after 1899, most of these people that you see as Native American and a lot of these powwows and stuff, a lot of these people got that understanding of what it means to so-called be Indian, right? After and based on the, the uh, Buffalo Bills Wild Wild West show. And this was a show just like uh, Birth of a Nation. How you had Birth of a Nation come out and basically promote the KKK that led to over, what, 200 and some odd years of brutal terrorism. The same thing happened with the Buffalo Bill Wild Wild West show in making a lot of people believe that they were actually more native than they really were. Kind of like how Hollywood does now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. How they did with Exodus Gods in Egypt where everybody that's doing the work in so-called Egypt uh, is so-called melanated, but then the ruling class are all happen to be white people who at the time, if this really did happen, they were in the caves and stuff like that. What we have to understand is that there is a 
an old adage that says those who do not know their history will be doomed to repeat it. And so what's happening now is that there's a revisionist history going on where they want us to believe that, again, not only do we come from Africa, but worse, that we were slaves here in this country, when really that's not really how it all went down. What really happened was... And that's not everybody's story. That's not everybody's general. story. But right. for, for some reason, if you're this color, that's what is supposed to be your story regardless of whether you was born here or not. And that is a problem because what that does is it gives us a false sense of inferiority and it gives another people a false sense of superiority. When these people that they talk about who are Native Americans and Grand Chieftains today, talking about the ones that's opening the, uh, the casinos and all this other stuff, they are all descendants of people from Tartary. And how can we prove this? This is because... Way back in the days, there was an empire in ancient China called the Xiang Dynasty. And the Xiang decided, under a man named Hu Xian, another Mo, decided to come over here and find their cousins who they referred to as the Western Ixi, or Ixe, or Yi. And so when they came here, they found an Omex here that was already here from time immemorial, and they both merged their culture. When, they, when that culture merged together, they became one people. And then out of that people, we get the people today we call the Hopi, the Anasazi, uh, the so-called Pueblo cultures, and all of that. Right? It wasn't until maybe 16,000 years later when the Hindus wow. was exiled from India by the Sindhi Moors or the mm. Moors from old Bombay and all of that. Kicked them out after the Hindu invasions. They all was brought over in boats and brought over here. When they came here, they then mixed with the so-called Otankana Aboriginal people who were already here. And then those Ab Aboriginal people allowed them to stay in a certain area. And they adopted them into certain aspects of the culture. This is where you get people called the Mixtex and the Zapotex and the the uh, Toltecs and these type of people. Mm -hmm. They were all descended from the Almecs. Now the Almec people, the original constituency, started to move further up. They started to move further up from La Venta, Palenque, uh, uh, Chichen Itza, and move further up into what we would now call the Midwestern United States and then further, and then after a certain amount of time, they dwelled there and it started to disperse into right, right. sub-tribes and nations. Some of those sub-tribes and nations, one of the biggest ones was called the Yamasi. I don't know if any people saw the movie Apocalypto, but in that movie, there was a blue dye that they were painting the people who were going to be sacrificed in. That blue dye actually comes from red clay that's found in uh, Georgia, the red clay in Georgia. And it was an old custom that the uh, queens would ingest some of the red clay in Georgia because it would help with the uh, magical properties that they were trying to pass on to the base. And a lot of all the people still do that to this day. So what happened was the Yamasi nation basically... What happened was... Right, what happened was what the Yamasi nation was, established themselves... And what we call Georgia and all that, we and, then like the sub, and then one of the sub, and then one of the, I'm sorry, and one of the sub, and then one of the sub nations called the Southern Cree, and then the Northern Creek decided to go against and fight the Yamasi. There was a big war between that, and then the Yamasi basically uh, lost the war, and their women were then brought in as squaws, meaning captured queens, to uh, populate with the Cree, the Northern Cree, and the Southern Creek. And once they had those babies, though, that became another nation now. That nation was then known as the Seminole. And then the Seminole were then given land back down in what we right here call Al Andalusia, and they came back down here. That's why around the time of uh, Santa Ana, days the, the day, Santa Ana, who uh, was the Moor that ruled all the Mexim, that's why when the Seminoles agreed to go back to Mexico, it was okay because that was the ancestral, the ancient ancestral lands of their forefathers, the so-called Almex now. But what modern history today has told us is that the Seminole, the word Seminole, means runaway slave. And so the so-called uh, uh, ancient Big Buffalo people, that's another name for us, the Big Buffalo people, uh, the, uh, the ancient uh, bison riders is what they used to call us. All of that history was then redone and reconstructed between the years of uh, Manifest Destiny, let's say around 1854 to, let's say, 1899. And after Reconstruction, Reconstruction stopped with Rutherford B. Hayes. And then in that, then, they started to supplant the fact that anybody dark-skinned was basically a slave from Africa, which is not true. And anybody who was of the reddish hue or uh, mixed with us, right, who could trace their descendancy back to the Omex, those people had to be wiped out. So you have to understand, wow. between 1492 and, let's say, 1899, we're talking about over 120 million Muslims from North from uh, Alaska, Alaska to Chile, who were all Moors and were also called Apoptons, who had turbans and feathers and all of that. That whole history was redone and redistributed under this new Native American history, by which now we now, the forefathers and the foremothers of these people who call themselves Native Americans today, 
right? They're looking at us like we're descendants from them, when really they're descendants from us. That's why they're still wards of the state and the Moors are totally free. So in order for anybody to really get back to where they need to go, we all need to understand where we came from. And because if you don't know where you came from, you won't know where you're going. So mm -hmm. again, I just wanted to get it straight and let you know that you are what your forefathers and ancestors were today. So when it comes to your ancient history as El Almaracanos, meaning El Maracanos Estado, so a Moorish state that was always here, there was a corporate state of religion, no usury. Remember, by religion, you're not supposed to double dip, not supposed to tax or be taxed. You're not supposed to do that. From this came the secular treaties or the Vatican treaties in which the Vatican became the third party to these Moorish treaties. That's why you see the Pope wearing the free sing um, um, uh, joint with the Moors head on it. That's why you see him with this. Or a version of this. Because they're acting as the belligerent trustees over those black nobility families that may or may not still be in position. You know what I'm saying? Who may or may not have married in or blended in or whatever in with whatever clan or nation or whatever. You see what I'm saying? So evidence of these armies is everywhere. The Confederate flag, second national flag of the Confederate States of America. It's the second national one. The first one looked like the, the what they call the centennial flag. The Confederate banner adopted May 1st. See, 1863 Confederate flag banner due to an overwhelming amount of uh, whatever. But essentially, this was the original flag, right? That's being flown by these malls to the point they're putting it in money now. So they can't say, look at the mall, this is they ship. This, this is our Navy, right? Fighting under the Crescent in South Carolina. See, it don't say United States on the front. It say what? E pluribus unum. Because this was the union of all of those reconsolidated malls, all of those reconsolidated states that fought for their own jurisdiction or whatever their cultural nationality was up until that point. Those that were able to maintain it. And so what did they do? They couldn't and then what started happening in Europe is they proxy, they proxy soldiers start now working to replace them and it forced them to flee over here and then marry into the families over here. Right. But they didn't told us that the Confederacy was all white people. Right. Didn't they tell us that? Because again, the, the grift has been that the white man has done everything wrong and everything this. When the reality is, we already we fell to one another. We fell to people that look just like us, but have more like white friends. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they they just knew how to how to work them better. You know what I mean? And utilize them to displace us. That's what. Othello was about. That's what Iago was doing. Think about the think about the story. Iago, everybody, niggas kind of knew he was grinding. But Othello is so caught up in what he's telling him about his shorty. You see what I'm saying? That that tragic more found himself, found himself uh uh caught up so much so that it wasn't until he out of her, he he out, he killed her. That he realized, oh, you was really doing it. And then and then before he could even really get the answers as to why, he said, no, I'm going to die without you even knowing why I did it. That's how sick these vendetta these niggas was with us. It's still like that. And Oppenheimer, the whole thing was really the issue. Again, they he, is his problem was he kept being around communists all the time. You know what I'm saying? But he wasn't one per se. He was about using whoever he needed to use to, to make this bomb and then wanted to act like what that he didn't know what they was going to do with it and then tried to flip it and try to get them to put rules and shit on it when he knew that they wasn't with none of that. 
So they use the communist thing to do it. But at the root of it, it's one dude. It was Robert Downey Jr. character who was had the whole vendetta against him the whole time. And it finally came out on the congressional floor. So it's the same thing with these flags here. Like we've been taught that the Confederacy was evil and all that. However, there seem to be a lot of so-called American Indians, i.e. Moors, right, who had nationalities that seemed like they wasn't with none of this. <laughs> it was popping and decided to band together and do their thing. That's what it looked like. That's what all of this looks like to me. You know what I'm saying? But they'll spin it like, oh, well, this was just a small band of them or whatever. But it makes sense. Mos Moscogo, Moscogi, right? Moors go to Mos, like it's, it's all what it is. But I guess unless you see, right? So then when you see them with presents and stars on their on jackets and on their thing or whatever, you just think, oh, that's just Indians wearing totems. Like, no, the so-called American Indians was very careful with the stuff they wore. So don't try that. Just like they were trying to say, oh, well, the Moors, they came from the Romans. That's what the Romans called them. Then what, then what did the Moors call themselves? Oh, well, so you mean to tell me people who was fighting against Rome allowed Rome to call them something? <laughs> like, how y'all sound? Like, how do you even sound? Oh, well, Mauritania, you know, is over there and that's where it was in Africa. Yeah, but it didn't become that until like 1970. This congressional record say that it's over here in the, the Midwest, right on this map where it say Granada. Right on these maps that got all of these castles on the coast with all of these red flags. <laughs> Smallish flags all over the place with these giant trees. You see the joint right here? Now, someone in the chat room is saying that Washington, uh, no, Washington, first uh, president, George Washington, conducted the French Revolution in 1787 to 1799. Well, okay. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I can easily agree with that, but I haven't done any research on that. And don't and tell that person, don't forget that French, the French and Indian War, was black French and black Indians. They made those names up. They didn't exist. We were the first ones on earth. The oldest people on earth. Everything came from us. Germans, French, English, everything came from us. We were that in the beginning. So when they say French and Indian War, the first thing we think about is over there in Europe, France, and that's not what they're talking about. Because the war of French and Indian War was in the Northwest Territory, in Detroit, uh, Michigan, Ohio, all this Great Lakes area. That's where the Indians fought. Detroit was founded by French. But they were not French. But over there, what you know today, you see what I'm saying? Right, right. You know, I used to have a map. I'm not used to I got a map of early 16, 1700 United States, and all of those countries were here. They got ran out in 1812. Most of the people were about the War of 1812. None of them can tell me what that war was about. They made a couple of movies from Hollywood with that bald head, uh, Ewell Brenner, and uh, Latif, L L L somebody Latif, that was fighting down in New Orleans to give you a general idea with Andrew Jackson. But that's not what it was. Andrew Jackson and the, and the legislation said they wanted only one flag in the United States. So they were pushing all of the other countries off the United States. See, this is a diabolical plan that was set up probably, I don't know, 1500 sometime. Where we are today, it was all set up way back. And they needed a power base, United States, they needed this land in order to do what they're doing today, to take over the earth. And we were the fall guy. That's why we don't have a nationality. Keep asking yourself. Why don't we have a nationality? Everybody. I did, did you hear that, Beth? Yeah. Uh, uh, say that again, Ryan. I'm sorry. Say that again. Somebody was asking a question. I didn't hear it clear. Did you hear it? No, that wasn't me. That was the computer. Something else that popped up. Oh, okay. I guess all I was saying was the War of 1812 was set up and fought to run all flags off of the United States. That's all it was. And let's not forget, now listen to this carefully, the Morocco government, where they try to say the Moors came from, was only founded in 1958. 
Now, think about that. How can it be founded in 1958 when I'm talking about Morocco, El Morocco, back in 1600? They had to set up Morocco over there to confuse us. The same way they set up Israel to get the Christians to think that Jesus had blonde hair, blue eyes, and pale skin. They made that crap up. <laughs> this is if all the people want to be Indians. Listen who has jurisdiction over you. Okay, listen. Plenary power doctrine. Congress, and not the executive branch or judicial branch, has ultimate authority with regard to matters affecting the Indian tribes. Paul, read again. Plenary power doctrine. Congress, and not the executive branch or judicial branch, have authority with regard to matters affecting the Indian tribes. So the United States legislative branch has authority over all tribes. You see that? So the United States of America is in the number two spot. Indian reservations and tribes are in the number three spot. So the United States of America is in the number two spot. Indian reservations and tribes are in the number three spot. But who's in the number one spot? The Empire of Morocco. Origin production of pertaining to a characteristic of indigenous inhabitants of of a place or country right now the term okay. of right is different than the term for so when i say the united states of america is different than saying the united states for america so if i say the united states of america what am i saying in your opinion no of america you're you're saying it's it's, it's i mean it it sounds unauthentic to me. It sounds like it's 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 of something else. Right. It's of, right? Meaning that it's but, coming from something that is not necessarily attached to, right? Okay. Well, to be clear, let's look up what of O F means, right? Okay. We have to do this because Okay. Now, the Patriots, can the, can Patriots, this is a question, can a Patriot be indigenous? Can these Caucasian Patriots that are filing this paperwork, can they really be indigenous here? No. How come? They can't be indigenous because they're, they're... You get whatever answer you want. It's not no wrong or right, per se. I understand. I'm just trying to formulate my words properly, but, but they're... they're they're from somewhere else right they're from somewhere else right so the term right. of the term of means of a term denoting that from which anything proceeds indicating origin source descent and the like as he is of a race of kings or he is of noble blood right associated okay. of then means associated or connected with usually in some casual relation efficient material formal or final right the word has okay. been equivalent though to the word after see what i'm saying okay that the phrase of is equivalent to the term to the word after at so another word synonymous so if you say the united states of america you're basically saying the united states is after america right I got you. I got you. All right. It makes sense now. Okay. Then, if we go further, it also means, also the term of means or is equivalent to the word at or belonging to. So when we say the United States of America, then we're saying that the United States belongs to America. Therefore, if the United States belongs to America, how then can the United States be America? Right. You know what I'm saying? I got it. Then, then you do the knowledge. Let's say if we look at it like that too, right? Let's look at it like if United States of was at. And that means we would be saying the United States at America. Meaning that the only place the United States could be is, it, is at, <laughs> right? America. Right. So if that's the case then... Right? Okay, further on. Um, the legal statutes that really basically prove this, right? So, okay, so that's the United States of America. So, in that, then, Caucasian people, being that they were not the people that was here first, right? That means that, okay, being that they weren't here first, 
Well, before we get to them, let's finish with us. Hold on. Um, let me find this dude first. Hold on. Okay. The term. So let me ask you this thing. Can Caucasian people or anybody that's foreign that's coming here from somewhere else, can they be Americans? Can they be Americans? Yes. No. Well, no. They can, they can, they can be natives, can't they? Ah, very good. Let's look at what the word native means then. Being the place or environment in which a person was born, a thing that came into being. So in that, good job, kid. So in that, they are something that came into being here, right? So if that's the case, right. yes, technically, technically then, they can be native. But ask yourself this, can they be native if they are designated as white? And it's no disrespect to them. They can be whatever they are. Their ancestors were the ones that was out there going at the buffalo and all of that. But we didn't let them into the cities like that. They wasn't coming around the holy mounds and all of that. It was not doing that because they was they was regulated <laughs> before the white man got here. So if people want to say that they're descended from them, that's fine. They was the ones worshiping the sky and 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 all of that. We wasn't doing none of that. <laughs> we was building aqueducts and, and all of that still. <laughs> that's why the white man broke all of the treaties with them. Yes, worshiping the corn and all of that. We wasn't doing none of that. Don't let the movie pray fool you. That was none of that was happening. <laughs> none of that was going on, man. That's all modern day. We trying to make everybody hate men. Like none of that is real, man. Men fought and died to protect women. This is the Power Show, and you are listening to Beverly D and Ron March of the Ron March Show. Uh, Ron March, are you back? Yes, ma'am. I'm here, and I'm ready to go. Okay. All right. You've been hitting, you've been hitting my car tonight. I'm not through with you. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm not through. So let's go to the, back to the five tribes. Okay. And I'll, I'll lay Seminole, Creek, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Cherokee. These names are very important because the Europeans made them nations, which means that there were thousands, hundreds of thousands of Moors under each one of these titles, but they, they, they fixed it so that only those that were desirable to the European became the civilized. So they had to create a, new, create a new name for all the civilized ones and then put them into this five civilized tribes. Does that make sense? I mean, do you understand that? Okay. Now, now listen carefully. Islam law and world politics is specific. No half-stepping. You must stand on your square. I teach this all the time. Here are five Crimatinian Moorish titles of nobility that ties so-called Indian, Indu, Indios, Indus, and Blacks. All of this is tied into the five civilized tribes. Now, to the sovereign American gate of America, Amexium, El Morocco, and the North Gate. Here we go with Black America. El, Bay, Day, Al, and Ali. Those are titles of nobility. These five titles belong to the five tribes, civilized tribes. They are El means Cherokee, Bay means Choctaw, Day, D-E-Y, means Seminole, Al means Crete. Ali means Chickasaw. The title El means God of Power. Bay means ruler or landlord. Day means knowledgeable. Al means the same as El, but El is masculine and I, Al is goddess. All means exalted, exalted or most high. You get it? Now, I know you've heard of, of, of L's and bays and days. All of that comes from the Moorish nation. All of that. And they 
The Europeans tied all of that into the so-called five syllables to keep us more confused. But they had to get away from the titles of nobility because the Constitution says they can never have titles of nobility in United States. This is why all lawyers, judges, pros prosecutors are traitors, treasonous traitors to the United States. Why? Because they all have a noble, a title of nobility called Esquire. You've seen that EQS behind those, those, those people's names. That means right. that they're Esquire. They were knighted by the Queen or the King of England to pay homage to them, not to us. This is how they, they maintain control. England maintains control of America through the law system. That's why it's all corrupt. No lawyer is a good lawyer. No judge is a good judge. Black, white, mama, daddy, cousin, husband, wife, all of them are crooks. Every one of them. Take another step. Allah. A arm, L, L, leg, leg. A second arm. H head, A L L A H, which is Allah. I got it. Got it? Thus, man being manifested in the form of Allah. Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. My head is crowned with love. I have right arm. I have peace in my left arm. My right foot, which is my leg, is unbound, giving me freedom. And my left foot, my leg, moves forward in justice, which creates Islam. I, self, L, law, A, M, M, master, slash, mother. I, self, Lord, am master. Islam is truly about peace, love, and honoring thy mother, because we are from the matriarch culture. They are from the patriarch culture. Islam is not terror and war, you see, on television. It is all peace and love. But they have manipulated it into and all of this fighting. So we get scared and afraid. We don't want to embrace Islam. We don't want to embrace Allah. And I'm not asking you to. I'm bringing you just facts. You can do what you want. I don't care. The tribes were uprooted from their homes east of the Mississippi River in a series of Indian removals authorized by the federal legislation over several decades and moved to what was referred to as Indian Territory and is now the eastern portion of the state of, California, of Oklahoma. All of this has roots as to who we really are. And they have us confused, number one, that we come over on a slave ship. you got to get rid of that. We, number two, those that they couldn't fool with coming over, they created a, what they call an Indian and say all things that happened in history came from the Indian. There's no such thing as an Indian. And if you ever meet one and say he's an Indian, just ask him why is he on the reservation. If he was an Indian, he sold us out. That's why he got on the reservation, because he told the Europeans, I'll help you kill them, because they're not Christians and uh, they don't love you. Alabama is from Ali Baba, and Illinois yep. is from El Illinois. Okay, okay. I don't have. I don't have. Listen, I don't have all the answers. I have a knack of making the story believe from my perspective. I'll agree with them, but I like for them to do more research in that. I, I love it. That sounds good to me. I don't have an argument with it. You follow me? Right. The most infamous Indian removal was in 1838, known as the Trail of Tears. The president enforcement of the highly contentious 1831 Treaty of New Ichita. Let's spell it out. E-C-H-O-T-A. They used that treaty to remove the Indian out of the Georgia, Tennessee, Mississippi area and pushed him out to Oklahoma. During the American Civil War, which I told you was not what you saw from Hollywood, but the court fights, the five tribes were divided in their loyalties. 
the Choctaw and Chickasaw from the predominantly, fought predominantly on the Confederate side, while the Creek, Seminole, and especially the Cherokee were split between the Union and the Confederacy. See, they're trying to clean up the trash that they put in the books. I'm looking right at it. The lies they put in the books. <laughs> yes, yes. Unlike Indian tribes in neighboring areas who belonged to the Iroquois Confederation and had a, democ a, a democratic form of government, listen carefully, the Power Tan tribes was ruled by, I can't pronounce his name, I'm going to call him Wachacucha. I don't know what his name is, I can't pronounce it. Arthur Chief, who had conquered and claimed over 30 different Indian bands, which would be tribes, living in as many as 100 different villages to form the uh, Power Tan Chieftain. While each band still had a chief, they were all required to pay tribute to Wachacancu, whatever this guy's name was, and were under his authority. That's the form of government we have today. The president. All of the governors pay homage to the president. They stole everything they have. They took it from us. And the most profound form of government was the Iroquois Confederation. This is, is the power tan confederation. In the beginning, relationship between the English and the power tan was And prisoners were taken on both sides to be held for exchange and peace negotiation. One at one point, the chief's daughter, Matapata, better known as Pocahontas, was taken by the English, European, and held as an exchange for English prisoners. Pocahontas converted to Christianity and was courted by John Wolfe, European. In 1613, the two were married with the chief's consent and the power of the Power Ten tribe and the English settlers established a peace coexistence. And you wonder why we in trouble? <laughs> All this stuff is so heavy, it just... Oh, so I want so everybody... Back, 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 back. So, so oh, yeah. someone in the chat room was asking uh, how did the tribe become white? Well, you just told me right there with Pocahontas and Wolf. Wolf was a European. That's what I know. And she said, okay. how did the Indians, all of them, are white now? And so they they got Pocahontas and the United United and the Milano children, and, and I can see yeah. how they became white now. Well, then I would ask that, that person who's there in the chat room, have they ever been to a powwow? And from what she's saying, I don't think that she's ever been to a powwow because of two fractions. Number one. Half of the so-called people to show up are blacker than I am. Number two, there is a large contingency of white people that show up. They claim they have a black blood. Why do they do that? Because the government, through treaties, owe them benefits. If you know an Indian, ask him about the benefits. They have good jobs for benefits. I told you, next time you take out an application and they ask you what is your race, check white. And see what happens to your mailbox. In a matter of two months, it'll be overflowed with benefits that you never knew existed. So yes, Indians are white and they're light complexed, but not all of them. Any light complexed black person or colored person can be an Indian. Which I tell you what, you'll never see a blonde haired, blue eyed Paskin calling himself Indian. <laughs> he can't pass the test. America is the land of the Moors. In 1845, a congressman referred to Mexico as belonging to the Mauritanian races and the Moorish people. Here's the source you can see it for yourself. On page number 8, you can see where they specifically mention the Moors. Here's another reference. Starting on page 374, you see that when the Englishmen came to the Americas, they indifferently referred to the natives as Indians and, on page 375, Moors. But wait, let's go back to when the congressman was talking about Mexico. It's not the borders of Mexico today. This is the map prior to the end of the Mexican War in 1848, and you'll see that all of the West Coast was Mexico. But then that raises the question, what about the East Coast? Well, here down below, you see the Delaware Code, Title 29, Subsection 106. The Lenape Indian tribe of Delaware was formerly known as the Moors. And here's that same information from the Delaware Code from their own website. 
And as you see at the bottom, it says delco.delaware.gov, meaning .gov. Now, the Delaware government admitting that the Lenape Indians are Moors is very important, and it was clearly articulated in this book right here. Is looking to the fact that the United States didn't exist until 1774, so you'd have to look in the diplomatic intercourse and correspondence between the parent colonist countries and the Sultan of Morocco. Which brings us to this point right here, that when the Dutch entered into trade agreements, the Dutch fur trade with the Lenape Indians, who we know that they're Moors, they first entered into a treaty with the Sultan of Morocco. And here's the treaty right here, which allowed the Dutch to have free trade in Morocco. They disguise it as a Lenape Indian treaty, but notice how the Delaware government admitted that the Lenapes are who? Moors. We can also see in this book right here that this portrait, this German portrait or Dutch portrait of a Moorish king could easily be an American Indian ruler. Another reference point is from the state of Illinois. House Resolution 0689, whereas the government of Illinois admits that Moorish people are indigenous to the Americas and Moorish peoples are aboriginal to the Americas, both North, South, and Central America. The state of Georgia admitted the same thing in their House Resolution 1203. And as you see, the link down below is Georgia's official government website. It says legis.ga.gov, and they said, whereas the Moorish Americans are aboriginal to the territories of North, Central, and South America. And as we can see from this book right here, Morocco as it is, published in 1839, there's a Sultan of America. And as we can see here, the word Morocco is derived from Medigesh, which is derived from the Berber word Ameruk, which from Ameruk we can see and hear Ameruka, America, which means America is not derived from an Italian man named Amerigo when the Berber word is 1,800 years older than America. And that's what they do. And that's where we are. Remember what I told you, the first president of the United States was who? Adam Wassenhoff. European, the founder of Illuminati. They took his face and put it in a black place. People listening have, this is a good question. Since we got a live audience, I want somebody to go to the chat room and say that they know a European family with the name Washington. I'll give them two seconds to get in. <laughs> they don't exist. Why not? We know the European wants to be a part of anything that can create power. Who in the world can be more powerful than a descendant of George Washington? You got the Kennedys all over the place. You got the Clintons all over the place. Soon you're going to have the Obamas all over the place. All them Republicans, Romneys, and all them names mean something can get you started in a political argue, fight. Or not fight, fight, but a political position. Because my great-great-granddaddy was Abraham Lincoln. That old crap. But what the hell happened to Andrew Jackson? There's a few white folks named Jackson. They don't like to talk about it. But you ain't going to find no whitey named Washington. No, it's got to be a reason for that. Reason was, remember? Uh, yes. I mean, I'm... Washington... Serious. <laughs> Washington is another name for Wachita. And Wachita has been labeled by the United Nations as the oldest indigenous people on earth. Now, if that's not an honor, look it up. Don't look at me like I'm making up something. You look it up. The United Nations. And that's what I, I was trying to explain to you couple of weeks ago and last week, they have a, a mandate that the Moorish nation, which is Wachita, they do the Mayu. The Moors are the oldest, in, in the words, oldest indigenous people, not persons, people on earth. Now, that's got to mean something. That's why we got to build ourselves a nationality, and it's got to be labeled with a uh, incumbent's title such as indigenous. I am an indigenous, indigenous, omic, watch it all more. And I ain't got to file no papers. I ain't got to argue with nobody. I'm in my, my zone from what I know. And once you start studying from your zone, you're going to find that you have some rules and regulations as being indigenous that don't apply 
to the colonies. System. This is going to blow y'all away. I'm telling you, this is going to rock the world, okay? All 13 colonies had rich black people in those colonies, rich black people, families, wealthy black families, in all 13 colonies, and they all owned slaves, white slaves, not black ones, white ones. Yes, it was indentured, indentured servitude, okay? But they, they, they lived on the, the black man's farm and they worked for the black man. And the only difference between slave, it don't matter, you're still a slave as long as you don't, you know, you could be a slave either way, but you're still a slave. But the point that 13 out of 13 colonies, all 13 colonies had black people own white slaves. Sure did. And they worked for them. Imagine that. And another one, but we'll get into that another time. But it's the 13 black colonies. And um, reason being, again, I want to go over this is to prove to you and show you everything that I've been talking about in my videos. I can validate what I'm saying when it comes to who came here, who enslaved us. All right. Um, we already know when the pale man came here. We already know we, the original people that was here. All right. So once you, we start putting all the pieces together, you'll realize how and see how we got into the situation that we're in today. We have to go back into history. So here we go. Introduction. Right. It says the image. The image on the front of the, of the cover of this book is the original Delaware Charter, which includes the original black image of King Charles II of Scotland and England. All right, now you, you're going to hear a lot of, you know, black and black and white in here. So we're not going to play the semantics. All right, we're just going to read it for what it is. I just would rather do that than rather deal with the semantics right now. I really don't want to get into that. All right, so here we are. Let me get some more light here. Turn that around. And um, so this right here, this man right here, as you can see, with the long hair, the image, all right, that is, okay, this is King James, all right, the original black image of King Charles, pardon me, King Charles II of Scotland and England. This book is the first of its kind in that it proves the original founding fathers of the 13 British colonies were five black kings from Europe. So when they are teaching in the schools that the founders of, you know, you know, the United States and all that, blah, 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 and they show you the Caucasian, you know, um, people, that is, you know, yes, they founded, they, they founded the United States with the assistance of the people from the 13 colonies, all right? So, once again, my goal is to put this in perspective, all right? And now, I provided, and when the I means, you know, um, you know, the author of the book, which is Lee Cummings, right? I provide you with a rare ship's manifest that gives a physical description of the Black Scottish Highlanders as they board the convict ships. You will also read... The eyewitness account of former English um, Secret Service agent John McKee as he describes the black princes, dukes, and barons of the Scottish nation. I, meaning Lee Cummings, have inserted DNA evidence from four different sources which validated the colonization of North America by black people. Like I told you, our chief colonel will know what he's talking about. It wasn't the pale men who colonized our land, okay? It was the black nobles of Europe, okay? At that time, Europe, Africa, they're the same landmass. They're the same thing. Europe was African. Africa was Europe. They're interchangeable. They're synonymous. All right? Keep that in mind. So once again, I'm just here to validate the things that I say. Do your research. Okay? The original colonizers, the invaders of our land, who first enslaved the American Indians, what was deemed the American Indians was, was, were the black nobles. Whether you want to call them Moors or not, not all of them call themselves Moors. Okay? Not all of them call themselves Moors. And I'm not going to get into this debate Right now, this is not about Moors. This is about telling the truth, all right, about who came here to colonize us. So, all right, so when you start talking and you, I did a video about the American empire, now you would see how all this is coming together. Because like I said, I like to bring my facts, all right? Now, it says, let me read that again. I, meaning Lee Cummings, have inserted DNA evidence from four different sources which validate the colonization of North America by black people. All of a sudden, we are, we are reading articles that say 40,000 years ago, dark-skinned people came into Europe and populated Scotland, Britain, Ireland, Spain, and America. We are reading the statements from the scientific terms. The ancient Europeans retained their darkness longer than expected. We are reading statements like, they, here, they were here, but they vanished. Can you say damage control? The result from genetic research, 
the writings of ancient historians, the Negro Question book series, and the archaeological record are forcing the Europeans to admit that the true founders of Europe and America were black. This will be astonishing to the so-called Negro and this scholars and his scholars, but it will be old news to the white elite. They already know this. Take your time when you read this book and don't be in a hurry. This is truly the next episode. All right. All right, the, the title of the book is The Negro Question, all right, part six, The 13 Black Colonies. All right, I said that in the beginning of the video. So um, for those of you who missed that, you're gonna have to go back in um the, to the beginning of the video, okay? So here we are, chapter one, The Family of King James. And this is Professor Boyd Watkins, I mean Dawkins, pardon me, and that's 1837 to 1929, okay? Um, Here we go. British um, genealogists, not gene um, geologists, I'm sorry, not genealogists, geologists, archaeologists essay our earliest ancestors, page 96 and 97. In the year 449 AD, certain Englishmen came from North Germany and southern shores of Baltic Sea and pushed the Britons, ancient name of England, westward. All right, so Britain was the ancient name of England, and then the people came, who came from the Baltic shores, in other words, the so-called white people, they pushed the so-called black people towards the westward of England. By the year 607 AD, the English had pushed the Britons westward as far as Chester. So just so you know, the original Britons were so-called dark-skinned or black people, all right? So here we are. The English, the English carved out Yorkshire, Chester, and Southern Lanshire forming the kingdom of North Umbria. Professor Boyd Dawkins is given the location of the, white, the whites in England. The inhabitants of Britain belong to very different races. Britain was inhabited by the Basque from ancient times and they, were called them, and they called themselves Roman citizens in their books, where are their books? They were called the Britons or Welsh. There are two types of Welsh. One is dark and five feet, four inches, and the other is tall and round-headed. The English pushed the dark Welsh slash Britain westward into Wales, Cumberland, Westmoreland, Highlands of Scotland. Even in Jamaica, there's a, a place in Jamaica called Westmoreland, all right? Because those people did not come from Africa. They came from Britain. So once again, you have to know your history, man. Everybody didn't come from Africa. And at that point, Europe is, Africa is part of Europe, okay? Africa is part of Europe. It's not the other way around or vice versa. Because at first Africa was only only to um Tunisia was called Africa, but because of colonization, it, it extended to the entire continent. So Europe existed before Africa. For those of you who don't know, so when y'all have these people telling y'all y'all from Africa, know what y'all talking about, man. Know what y'all talking about. You, you, it's easier. You would be more accurate if you said you are actually a European because the original Europeans were dark. And yes, a lot of you are actually in the mainland. You have a lot of your descendants who are actually Europeans. They are from Britain, and that's facts. They are also from Ireland and Scotland and Portugal. Okay, but they all didn't come from that part they call Africa. I hope this helped you out on learning more about what happened in the Americas and who was actually in the wars and who was actually here. It was us versus us. Us that went across the pond and came back Christians with white friends and started to be greedy and wanted to take over homeland. They infiltrated us in South America and Peru with Charles V of the Holy Roman Empire. Him coming over here, bringing Christianity and a Masonic rule over here. Started off there and the conquistadors came and brought Christianity. And then the 13 black colonists, they brought Christianity and had us aboriginals of America turn Christianity and becoming the five civilized tribe. The tribes that converted to Christianity and into their way and turned around and war with the rest of the Moors. This is how America got all these POWs, so-called slaves. All they did was kill off the adults and take the children. And once you take the children, you can educate them on whatever. And by the time they become adults to teach their children, they'll have your way teaching the, the children a different way. That's how they controlled us. They killed the parents took the children and the virgins, just like they Bible say, 
take the women and children and the women that are not virgins, kill them. That's what they did. And when you take the women and the children, that's all you need to restart a whole new mind frame of thought, of history. And this is how we got to where we are right now. It always has been us versus us. It was us as the founding father. It was us that was signing treaties with us. That's why they can't answer to no treaties because it wasn't them. They only taking the seat as the people who did this. And then they whitewashed everything. Just like what ML King said, a hundred years ago, they whitewashed everything. They changed everything within a hundred years. It wasn't 400 years. It was only a hundred years. A hundred years from when Martin Luther King said that speech, a hundred years. But 100 ago. years later, but 100 years later, hundred years later, this is how we got to where we at right now. So after they whitewashed everything, made them the founder fathers, made them the pilgrims, made them the Christians that came over here, it can't happen like that. What make it more easier is people that look like us making deals. And then them, white people, taking over the people who was making deals with us. All I ask is more Morris teachers like Asir Ducatiers, Aline Bay, Angel Bay, Taj Tariq Bay, A1. I just need y'all to go deeper into those wars and teach the people. I know y'all can do it. <clears throat> I know I'm doing my part for the people who haven't uh, know anything about these teachers that's teaching about the Morris Empire. You can go check them out on their page and subscribe and learn more. My job is to show y'all that it's more information out here that people haven't heard. So I need you to be master students and learn all you can. And I'm out. Too much proof. Come on. We got too much proof. Let's go. Too much proof. Come on. We got too much proof. Let's go. Let us through. Let us or you gonna make the news. Let's go. Let us through. Let us or you gonna make the news. Let's go. NBC. Make that make some sense. NBC. Make that make some sense. Let us through. Or you gonna make the news. Let us through. Or you gonna make the news. Let's go.